guys, welcome back to Booster Gold. In this episode, as I'm sure you can see in the title, we are going to be reviewing all three of the Edge of the Empire, so the Fantasy Flight Star Wars role-playing games um, <clears throat> GM screens. So, first of all, let me just say that in Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, and Force and Destiny, you are called a GM, not a DM, because in uh, Pathfinder and <clears throat> Dungeons and Dragons, you're called a DM as a dungeon master, but in this, you're a GM as a game master because um, there's no dungeons, really. I mean, there are dungeon-esque things, but there's no dungeons specifically because it's Star Wars. Um, they call me Master of the Expanded Universe. Actually, my players do because I always uh, GM. So anyway, let's just... Uh, first, I'm going to show you all of them, just the front of them. So that's the Edge of the Empire. Uh, here was the expansion right after that, Age of Rebellion. And then here is Force and Destiny. So let me get these two out of the way, and um, let me just show you what is in these. So first of all, each of these come with cool art on the back of them. Uh, sorry, <clears throat> don't have much room for recording, so might not even get all the art in the shot. Definitely not going to get all the art in the shot. So anyway, here is the back of the Edge of the Empire GM screen. Very cool. And let me just show you the parts within it. So. It's very nice because this just makes sure that, you know, G new GMs and everything can um, understand what's happening. So right here, we have symbols and dice. So you can see the symbols and what they do exactly on the dice. Uh, and then you also have a picture of each of the die here and the colors for what they say. Because like right here, it'll say add a blue one. And then this one right here shows you that it is a blue one. It's called a boost die. So, it also has the advantage, in, or how to spend your advantage in triumphs, uh, and shows you exactly how much it costs, so you can tell your players. Also, there's, you know, house rules, if that's something you do, and there is nothing wrong with that. I play with house rules myself. Anyway, you have how many difficulty die you should be putting on uh, each check um, for the range. That's what this is up here. And then down here, you have... No, that's just difficulty level in general is actually my bad. Uh, so you have easy, it's one purple, which is called a difficulty die. And then two, three, four, and five. Um, here are your range attacks and how much purple or difficulty die you should be putting on each of those. Here are your modifiers. So if you're engaged with range light, you have to add an extra difficulty. If you're engaged with range heavy, you have to add two difficulty. And if you're engaged with gun gunnery, you can't. You actually can't do that. You cannot um, use like miniguns uh, if you are directly in front of your target. Uh, here's how you spend your threat and despair. So here is what players can actually do, the advantage and triumphs, and here's what I can do as a GM. I can spend threat and despair to, you know, hinder them. So on this screen we have all the ranged weapons and melee weapons and their stats, how much they cost, their range and whatnot, so you can just, you know, basically know what your players are having and so you can add to their die without having to say, uh, what's your range? Stuff like that. It's very, it's very handy. Um, there are the qualities down there. So, it, so for example, uh, I don't know if you can see a thermal detonator right there under explosive and other weapons, but it says range light. So the check will be a range light check. It does 20 damage with two critical, short range, one encumbrance, uh, zero hard points. It's rarity, or it's rare, and it costs 2,000 credits. Uh, it has a rarity of 8, and it has blast 15, breach 1, vicious 4, limited ammo 1. So down here, under weapon qualities, you can actually find out what all those things are. So breach, for example, is ignore one point of armor, which is 10 points of soak. So, uh, it has blast 15, which means it ignores 150 points of soak, which is essentially your shield. So that's actually overpowered, but it also has limited ammo, which means you can only have one. Um, here are what happens when you get critically hit, what uh, the rolls you make, and exactly um, it adds that much to that many difficulty die to your pool, uh, and you have to roll a d100, uh, as you can see on the left here, to find out what your wound is. And if you get 151 plus, you are dead. You just die. Uh, there are the maneuvers you can make right here. Uh, and actions, because you can spend um, an action to activate an ability, for example, or a force power, or doing a skill check. Uh, there is the armor down there, and how much it blocks, but 
armor is not super important and super important in Edge of the Empire because you don't really get it very much. But and then here we have the vehicle critical hits, and that also was not super important in Edge of the Empire because uh, there wasn't that much vehicle combat. So let's put this one aside. We've seen what's in it, and let's go on to Age of Rebellion. Um, sorry, I'm a little sick. Um, so this one right here has almost exactly the same thing. It's got the same setup for where everything is in here, melee weapons and all the weapons right there. Your uh, injuries, maneuvers, armor, vehicle critical hits, but the only difference really with this one is that there are a few new weapons, and the weapons have been balanced a little bit better. Uh, there's also like anti-vehicle mines under explosives, whereas before the explosives were just, there was like three explosives in the whole game. Uh, you could obviously add weapons of your own, but there was about three explosives in the whole game. Um, also, lightsabers are just as rare in this one as they are in Edge of the Empire, but they added, or they added improvised weapons. Like small, medium, large improvised weapons. They're all melee weapons, but you know, it's just like picking up a stick and then stabbing someone with it. That's an improvised weapon. And then, as I said, there was a lot more vehicle combat in this expansion, so they have a lot more vehicle critical hit things. It's much more expanded on. Um, so that's really the only difference in Edge of the or Age of Rebellion. Um, but Force and Destiny, uh, for the GM screen itself, it's it's also pretty much the same. I will show you that, obviously. But it kind of added more weapons, really. So, I don't know if you can tell, but see the melee weapon section, which is the second section here, is much larger than the range weapon. Because in this expansion, you were intended to play melee. But obviously, all of these are interchangeable, so you can, you know... For the, for the most part, I'll... For ranged weapons, I use the Age of Rebellion screen. But for melee weapons, I use this one. Because then it's much more balanced. Because um, the enemies I make, I, I create them myself. I don't use the enemies that come in the rule books because they're not necessarily fair, in my opinion, uh, for how I GM. In terms of using the separate screens for different items. Um, so, like here. In this one, and this one, um, lightsabers are a rarity of 10. They cost 10,000 credits. And they do 10 damage, so they're really good. But in this one, there's more than one different type of lightsaber. First of all, there's a training lightsaber, a shoto, a light, a lightsaber pike, a double-bladed saber, and a basic lightsaber. And they're all much more balanced. You obviously, or you probably can't see these numbers, but like they do six damage instead of ten. So they're much more balanced. So they would be fair with like a force pike or a vibroax because a vibroax is plus three, so it's three or it's your brawn plus three. So. The lightsaber is much more fair, but the lightsaber obviously has its advantages. It's better because it has breach one, sunder. Even this double bladed has linked one, sunder, unwieldy three, and like linked. Where is it? Well, here's unwieldy. Must have agility equal to rating or increase difficulty by difference in all check. So they're balanced. They're really good, but you have to have agility to use them because that's the way that you know the story. In Star Wars is. Uh, Jedi's train to be able to use their lightsabers. It's not just like picking up a weapon and using it, you know? It's not like picking up a stick and using it as an improvised weapon. Um, so, basically they just changed as they needed to for the expansions. And that's the, they're great. They're cheap. And what's really great about them that I didn't mention until now. Let me grab them real quick. Each one comes with an adventure module. And they're not just like knockoff ones that they kind of threw in. They come like with the full adventure module. There's three play sessions in each of these, and there's a full story, and they're great. So Hidden Depths is the one that comes with Force and Destiny, as you can see. And Age of Rebellion has Dead in the Water. I don't know what this one's about off the top of my head, but this one is about... You, the PCs have to go get a ship that's shipping droids for the Rebels, uh, from Imperial droids for the Rebels, and then the droids become sentient and take over the ship, essentially. So then you have to stop that and then find out how it happened. And it's really interesting because I thought, 
Well, first of all, I didn't know these came with it, so when I bought them, I was like, wait, what? And then I saw that they had, um, and then I read them, and I was like, wait, they're not even, they're not, like, throwaway garbage pieces of paper, you know? Like, look at this. This is, like, look at that. There's drawings to explain, to show you, like, exactly what the ship looks like. It's got its own stats, everything. So there's, it's very high-quality product. I think they sell these for $15 on their own website, Fantasy Flight's website, but... Um, the store I bought them at were $20 because I didn't want to wait for it to be shipped to me, but that's okay. I don't know if you can tell, but my, uh, Age of, or my Edge of the Empire one is a lot more damaged than all the other ones because it's a lot older. Um, but anyway, that is my review. They are very great products. They are worth buying, mostly for the adventure modules, but they're worth buying for changing up your GM style and being more unique than other GMs, for example. Uh, we, like... I like to do it the way that I said. Uh, I'll use the expansion strong points, so like if an expansion has better melee weapons, then that's where the melee weapons are going to come from, because I want the players to have fun. Force and Destiny has more force than being a Jedi, so if there's a Jedi character, they can play from Force and Destiny. I will play from all of these and then let them choose classes from each of them, because if that's what they want to do, then that's what they should be able to do, because I want my players to have fun. And so it's very worth buying all these. Also, I forgot to show you the art in all of them, so let me show you the Age of Rebellion art very quickly. This one has Vader, a Stormtrooper, and Luke on it, and the Death Star. This one's really cool. It might be my favorite. But I really like the Force and Destiny one as well because it has Yoda on it, and Yoda is awesome. Not to mention, it also has um, my boy Darth Maul. Yoda, or Darth Maul, Yoda, and then some other person. It's very cool. So... These are, like, I mean, these are cool just to display. Like, if I had room in my room, I would display these because that's very cool looking. So there's a lot of merits to these, and I think they're worth buying. Some people might say otherwise, but as a person who's been GMing for four years now, I think, uh, in this game specifically, these are worth buying. Um, just as a point of reference, or even just because you want them for the adventure modules, I think any reason, honestly, is good enough to spare $20 or $15, because, you know, that's not very much money in the long run, and these will last you forever. So, the, all this information that is in these is obviously available in the book, but this is just a condensed place, and it, it, it's there in front of you. Uh, you don't have to flip pages, you know, there's like 400 pages, you don't have to flip to page 400 to find the information, it's all right in front of you. And as someone who's very lazy, that is a good investment. So, anyway, that is my opinion. I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope this helped anybody who was looking at, uh, to buy these, potentially. And I uh, appreciate feedback. Let me know if you have bought these, if you agree that they're worth buying. Or if you're thinking about buying them, let me know. Um, ask some questions if you need to. I will answer them as best as I can in the comments. And uh, thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Um, love you. Bye.